Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna show you a video that's kinda SpaceX, Tesla related, nah, mostly SpaceX. Anyways, I figured you're probably a fan if you're a fan of Tesla stuff too. Anyways, I found this really detailed model of a Dragon 2 capsule and I just had to share it with you. So I'm gonna show you the setup process of how I set up my stuff for 3D printing. And if all things go well, we should be able to show you a time lapse and show you the final result. But first, let me show you exactly what we're gonna print and how we go about it. So here is the detailed model. It's from a website called More Than 3D. It is, it is crazy, crazy. Um, it actually has an interior, an exterior. It comes apart, the nose cone opens up, um, even the trunk, here's all the parts. The way I've done this here in my software is I've um, I split this up into, let's see here, there's uh, white, gray, black, and orangey red. So there's, you know, four different colors we're gonna print. But the first process of this is getting all the files. Now here are the files, I've actually downloaded them all. They've broken it up in different steps. So this is the software I use called Cura. It's freely available and I've laid out the parts. So the first thing we're gonna do here is print some black stuff. You have to slice the 3D models in such a way. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Once you slice it, you get each layer. So we have a, a preview here on the right hand side that we can show you all the different slices. So anyways, what the software does is that it slices the 3D models in such a way that the 3D printer can actually print it. For those of you who know anything about this, as I've set a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, I've elected to print these particular pieces right here. These are the seats standing up. The whole goal of doing 3D printing is making sure that you start with as flat a surface as possible and build it up. There are times when you need to print things and the orientation may not be 100%, so sometimes you have to play. This comes with experience, but in this case here, we've got all the black parts that I need to do here, and they're lined up in such a way that I get the best result. Printing something flat, for example, and it has a curved surface, there's supports that come up underneath. So here in the seats, if I turn it sideways, you'll, you'll see here these little areas right here, if you can see my mouse, right about here, there's a big opening hole. So there's a support that has to be built in such a way that it can bridge from here to here on these parts. So these parts here will get cut out, and I found the orientation, at least for this model and these seats that we have to print, or the supports for the seats that are black, um, this will result in the best print. So I've opened the file here with all the gray parts, and you'll notice there's quite a few of them, and I've, um, I've organized them. Some parts are actually duplicates, just in case they don't print correctly. I've organized all the parts in such a way to minimize the amount of support material. As far as I can tell here in this model, there are no supports at the software is generated so should get a good clean print out of uh, out of this one this is the black part of the trunk you can elect to print this all in one piece but I've uh, decided to do it in two pieces one side is black the other side is white and we're gonna print this at 0 0.20 with um, yeah very little supports actually I put a little support blocker right there so that we don't get a tower here in the middle so I'm gonna print it in this orientation yeah that should work out quite nicely 21 hours, yeah, it's gonna be a long one. So I have to do another one, a white one as well. And then also have to do a body for the nose cone. They even supply some SpaceX astronauts, although these guys have to be scaled about 60%, make it a little bit smaller. We will have to make another one. So we'll just make uh, one other little guy. So they suggest we print that with a raft. So it ends up a little like an army man based on the bottom of these guys. Yeah, you can see the raft there, a little army man plate on the bottom, that's perfect. So we're gonna print the nose cone and this is what it looks like. You can see it's a fairly large part and it's sitting on its tip and I put some support blockers. According to the instructions, this is a delicate hinge mechanism so we don't want any, uh, any material in there. Oh yeah, that's kind of interesting. Here at the bottom you can see that it's building like a bit of like an egg holder or whatever and it should print out like that. Some more parts we have to do. This one here is the hatch. Unfortunately, it's uh, curved in two directions, so I can't lay that one down flat. I'm gonna have to leave it like that, but uh, we also have to print four seats. The nice thing about the seat here is I can lay it flat. So if I go over here to this and I click flat, I can click on a surface and it should lay it down flat like that. Let's just do a quick look. Yeah, the underside's gonna need a bunch of support material, as you can see. So I spent a few more minutes laying out some extra parts. So I have four seats on here, the top of the nose, the door, and uh, this other part here. This is the last of the pieces. Let's save that to the removable drive, which is my SD card. Now let's take my SD card out. 
and we're gonna go put that in the 3D printer. This is a Creality Ender 3. You can buy one of these online for less than $300. It is a fantastic printer if you're just a beginner. It's taken me a little while to dial it in. I have made a few mods to it. Number one is this little doodad right here. This is called a BL Touch. It is critical when you're doing 3D printing to get very good adhesion. I actually print on a mirror, and I, I find that works quite well. I'll show you here in a second how I get very good adhesion. But this little BL Touch, this bed leveler touch is the only mod, well, the biggest mod that I've done to the thing. Anyways, um, you'll see here in the time lapse what it does, but it actually measures several points on the platen to make sure that I get um, a good level surface. It actually does some minor, minor changes to the code when it prints so it checks the offset. Otherwise, you spend a lot of time leveling the damn thing um, every time you go to print, and this thing saves me a lot of time. The only other mod that I just recently did, <laughs> well, not a mod, but a change you can see here. This is my hot end, this is the part. It's gotten all gummed up. So, um, yeah, after a couple, three years of using it, uh, this thing is garbage, so I bought a new one. So it's in there, and I put uh, a new tube in there. Now I'm waiting for the bed to come up to temperature, 64 degrees centigrade, before I apply my glue. Now, I use glue on my mirror. I mean, a lot of other people use different methods. Some people use hairspray, some people use uh, paint, painter's tape. But I've tried them all, and this is the one that works best for me. I get very good adhesion using this methodology. So if you have a 3D printer, you might have to try different techniques to find one that works well for you. The critical part is making sure that when you apply it, at least I found, is to do a double cross hatch pattern. So lay it down in one direction, come back and put it down in the other, and then that gives you a right amount of glue. And uh, I tell you, the parts will stick on there. While the bed is still warm, it will not come off. Once it cools, you can just pry it off and it comes off really good. Yes, I have a little GoPro thing here set up so you you guys can see the layer process. We'll do a time lapse with that so you can see the build process because this stuff literally takes uh, hours and hours and hours. In some cases, for the larger part, it's going to take me over a day to print. Generally, what I do is between colors, I will take the mirror off and I'll actually wash it. It comes off with uh, warm water, it's super easy, and then I'll dry it off and then um, start printing again. So now let's go print from SD the black parts. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to press enter. Because I'm printing with a mirror, I go a little hotter, 64 degrees Celsius. And then the nozzle, well, it's going to warm up here anyways, but I usually print at about 210. 209, 210 degrees Celsius, that seems to work quite well. All right, we're at 64 degrees. It should kick in any second now. Oh, there we go. So here's the bed leveler. What it does is that it takes a measurement right in the middle. It'll take a very careful measurement. It'll go around and take three more points around the bed. So I had to stop the print and start over because uh, I guess due to the hot end change, the bed was off a little bit. So uh, I'm going to get it to print out. Just for an example here, when I do that first layer, it has to look like this. Now just as an example, I'll show you some of the quality prints that I get out of this printer. I mean. This is a case that I printed out for some LED matrix I've been working on. I mean, look, I mean, I get really, really good smooth prints out of that. I mean, look at that. Crispy, crispy. Almost 11 hours into the print, and the trunk, the black part anyway, is looking really, really good. a successful print of the uh, black part of the trunk. It took uh, 19 hours, <laughs> 19 minutes. I uh, just wanted to point out here, using this Elmer's glue stick on the mirror works really well. Look, I mean, look at that. It's, it's stuck on there really well. Ah, <laughs> it came off. There you go. You can see just a little bit of supports here on the bottom. We'll just have to clip those off. I'm going to take my side cutters to that and just trim it off a little bit here on these edges. This print came out Perfect. I'm very happy with it. Again, uh, build plate adhesion, good Elmer's glue. Printed the seats in the upright position because I get better prints that way. And you can see here the little bit of support material that I have to pull off, but that's okay. But they turned out really, really good, I think. So 
All right, I'm gonna call this print a success. We're gonna set it up and do another color, maybe maybe the gray this time. So I'll just pinch this and then feed it through until I feel resistance, right about there. And then I'll pull the gantry up. Now the PLA is heated, so I should be able to see some of it spit out. There it goes, it's starting to come out. Yeah, it's starting to go gray now. Good, okay, that's good enough. Another print just finished and I am beyond excited because this new Cura profile that I used, look at that, just beautiful print. Let's pull this one off and we'll do, I guess, the astronauts next or maybe the other white parts. Either way, this one worked out really well. Oh yes, another print just finished. White one is done. Let's see if it can come off easily there. Oh yeah, just separate up. Look at that. Beautiful print. Hopefully you guys can see that. One day, 14 hours, very thin layer height. There's a lot of support material in here which accounts for why it took so long to print. But I did a fine print on this and it's looking really good. There's one problem though, and on this side you can barely see it here, but I had a support gut that got knocked over and I was really worried with such a long print that it would sag, but so far it looks like it caught up on there. But this is the hero side, this is the part that really matters and uh, it, it is really good, I'm very happy with the result. It's finally done. As you can see, we finally finished printing the SpaceX Dragon Crew 3D printed model. Now, if you're into 3D printing, let me tell you, you have to have some patience for this stuff because it's not instantaneous. Matter of fact, it took me the better part of a week to print this. Now, I'm very happy with the results. It turned out fantastic, actually better than I thought. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested in downloading a free version of this model or a paid version of the model. That's what I have here because it has a fully detailed interior. Here in a second, I'm gonna take it apart and show you all the interior details about this model. Let's talk about some specifics. It is 12 inches tall, 30 centimeters, and it actually comes apart in several different sections. They include models for like scale size astronauts, and uh, I did a little something extra here. I'll show you that here in a second. But if you want to paint it, you can certainly do that. I elected to print it in the actual plastic, so there's four different colors. You got black, white, gray, and red. And the model is actually two separate parts. You have the actual capsule itself and then the trunk. And they're actually held on with magnets, which is really cool. So I'll just set this aside here and we'll show you some of the parts. So here's the trunk and you can see here on the top that there are four magnets and there are same magnets here on the bottom of the heat shield. And this part here is printed into two pieces, a black and a white part. You can certainly print it in one color if you'd like and then paint it on your own, but I just wanted this look. This basically represents the trunk part. Now the fully detailed version of it also has a hidden compartment if you'd like, so you can 3D print another piece. I elected not to do that. But anyways, you can put it in here it's held on with magnets and it has a little secret compartment. So that's uh, kind of a fun little feature they've added to the model. So the upper part of the model is the capsule and it's extremely well detailed. There are some really neat features of this. First one I'm gonna show you is the door. The door actually fits in place. It's actually held on with magnets. So when you're displaying it, you can certainly put it in like this, but if you'd like, you can just pull it off. And there are magnets here on the back side as well as on the interior and you can just put it in position so it holds it up like that so you can actually see the interior of course the other model that's freely available doesn't have the interior features so this door doesn't come apart the other part that's really neat is it has a fully detailed nose cone now this is also included in the solid model and it just opens up like so. It has a fully articulating hinge here part and on the top of the model you have a retractable soft capture mechanism that you can actually pull out and put it on display like this. So when you're displaying it you can show people how it actually works. Now if you'd like you can actually pull it out completely and then you have a full tunnel that goes inside. Now there is a uh, hatch on the bottom but you get the general idea. So the fully detailed model also has an extra trick up its sleeve. You can actually remove the top part. Again it's held on with magnets much like the other piece is 
and it reveals a detailed interior. So here on the floor, you can see that there are four seats and the seats do move. So you can put them in the loading configuration or the launch configuration. There's a simulated screen on here. It's not very detailed, but if you'd like, you can actually remove it or glue it on if you so choose. Now included in the model is an STL file for you to print out SpaceX astronauts that are both standing. Uh, they recommend you print a couple and I've done that here and I've actually painted them. However, I feel that this model needs a little something extra. I would really like to see the astronauts in a seated configuration so you can put them in the little seat. The author of the kit actually includes the originator who actually made the model. So I downloaded Blender and taught myself the very basics of it so I could make myself a seated version of the astronaut. I'll put a link in the video description if you'd like to download it yourself. I've contacted the author and suggested this, so I'll send him the file if he wants to use it. But scaled perfectly, sits in the seat, and I just have to paint them. So yeah, little freebie for you. I think it's pretty cool. I wanna give you some feedback on this. I really like this, it's very well detailed, although I do think that it would lend itself very well to be more of a traditional model where you know you have the injection molded in a kit if they spent a little time with some extra details. Like here on the floor, uh, it's not accurate to the actual thing. I mean, you know, there are limitations with 3D printing and stuff, so they had to make some compromises. The other thing that I think could be improved on the model, and I did contact the author about this, is the soft capture mechanism when it slides in, it just it just slides in and it just stops there. I think it would be best uh, if they had a, a mechanism where you could actually pull it out and twist it and lock it in position. Now, the tolerances on this are pretty tight. I did have to do a little bit of sanding on the model to get everything to fit you know, the way I liked it. Right now it's pressure fit, so probably not that big of a deal, but I think it's an improvement on the model that go a long way. But otherwise, I'm very, very happy with this and I do recommend it. If you do have a 3D printer and you wanna make yourself a beautiful centerpiece to put on display. This is the kit to get. Let's put it back together, shall we? So I'll take my free little astronaut and I'll stick him here in the seat. So as a closer, let's put it back together so you understand how everything fits. So I'm gonna take my little printed astronaut and I'll put him in the seat and then the cover goes on. And again, once the tolerances are good, it's just held on with magnets, so it's just gonna pressure fit like that. Let's put the soft close mechanism in. Close the cover and then we have the trunk. The capsule fits on top and it's just held on with magnets, just like that, it's not going anywhere. They do give you the uh, piece here in the front, which is the connector. Uh, unfortunately, with this one, I found that it doesn't stick all that well. It's just a tiny little ledge on there, so I just put a little piece of tape on there. That's probably another improvement maybe the model author can make to make that fit a little better. That might just fall off. And of course, you have your door and you can put it on display with the magnets or you can completely close it. The STL files that are included in this also have a bracket, so you can actually put this on display on its side. So I just want to give a shout out to the author. He did a fantastic job. Again, link in the video description if you want to check it out for yourself, but fantastic model, highly detailed. It's going to look great on my mantelpiece. Highly recommend it. Smash that like button, subscribe. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.